Welcome to the Dirty Side of Leadership podcast with Ron and Kristen, where leadership meets entertainment. This podcast features stories with names and certain aspects that have been changed to keep submissions private. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Dirty Side of Leadership podcast. We've all heard of burnout, but recent studies show that work-related boredom can spill over to physical ailments. The term is bore-out syndrome, and it's far beyond feeling unenthusiastic about your job. Ron, today we're going to discuss causes and symptoms of bore-out syndrome, and as always, offer solutions to rectify it. Yeah, Kristen, I did not realize this was such an issue uh, until yeah. the research, but um, obviously bore out can have some very negative effects on the workplace and the individual. So I'm so glad we're uh, visiting this. Yeah, and this is actually a an episode recommendation from my good friend, Justine. She listened to last week, loved it, and then suggested this. And when she sent me bore out, I said, you mean burnout? I thought it was a, a typo in her text message. She goes, no, bore out syndrome. I think I have it. <laughs> so I'm like, let me check into this. And it's a whole thing. A lot of research is being done overseas I would say more than here in the States on this, but it is starting to spill over into United States research as well. And a recent study showed employees who admitted they were bored at work experienced depression, stress, and anxiety. And it goes beyond psychological symptoms. Many also experienced insomnia, the inability to sleep, frequent headaches, and a weakened immune system. Pretty wild. Yeah, that is wild. And another element to consider is the same employees reported they were planning to resign within six Mm. months. So there's an attrition element, of course, to consider. And actually, 36% of these individuals were willing to resign without securing a new job first. And that always blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess I always wanted a safety net. And uh, even when I became an entrepreneur, you know, I caught myself going back like, what if, what if, what if? And when people tell me they're leaving a job, I always go like, oh, did you get a new job? No, I'm just leaving this one. And that it must just be bad. blows my mind. <laughs> right? For bad. someone to do that, even, you know, either they're completely irrational or they're in a bad spot and quite unhappy. I have to, you know, mention that because here Last week, I talked about on on 9-11, like the actual September 11th, when the Twin Towers were actually knocked down, I I worked for that telemarketing firm. And it was during that time where I realized, I mentioned this, I I needed to leave. I couldn't be there anymore. I'd been there two and a half years. I didn't have something lined up, but I was was working, applying towards at the bank, yada, yada. But my mom, literally, here I am living on my own. I was 23 years old. And my mom said, quit. I will pay your bills for the next few weeks until you get your job lined up. And I felt so uncomfortable doing that. But she's like, that is so toxic. I cannot allow you to to be in that situation any longer. So that is the only time I've ever done that. And it felt liberating at the same time as terrifying. Uh, So, Yeah. yeah, it must be bad if people are doing that. 36%. That's a big number. Well, I also found in my research that one of the common signs of bore out syndrome is something, you know, I have personally done before. I like to be open about that. And that's avoiding work by doing non-work tasks during office hours. And and that can vary quite a bit. But for instance, I caught myself staring at my computer sometimes. So I'd get up and I would organize my desk, get rid of some old paperwork. I would stop what I what I had on my plate and I would just kind of step away mentally and physically. And then I would come back and and I would be mentally energized to continue on. Now, I don't know if that necessarily falls into uh, doing something that's not work related, because technically I was organizing work stuff. But uh, like I said, that that's a there's a measuring plate right there. And that's the very beginning of it. What do you what do you think on that, Ron? You know, Kristen, I have strong thoughts on that, because one of the reasons when I develop curriculum, you have to think about and when I provide training, you have auditory you know, you have visual and you got kinesthetic learners or tactile. So I would say, Kristen, that you may be a combination of kinesthetic and maybe visual learner. 
And what happens is, is you learn hands-on stuff, Mm. but when you're designed to either be visual or auditory, you're just not stimulated at at a certain extent. So then you start to do something else that you're interested in. That's one reason. Right. Now, certainly some people just have jobs that are honestly boring, let's be honest, and they they just don't feel that it has great value. We'll, We'll talk more about that. But yeah, I do think that some people, I have told people this before, you need to start looking for a different career. This does yeah. not align with your personality at all. And I, I think that a lot of times people just follow this trajectory. You know, I do this, I go A, B, C, D, but maybe that's just not where your passion lies. Absolutely. No, I completely agree. So I know you're going to talk to us about something else that, that people that have bore out syndrome generally are doing. They might not even realize it. And that's distancing from colleagues and loved ones at home. Yeah, it, I like to say this. You know, if someone is dealing with bore out or burnout, like it's it's never in a silo. It's never, you know, it always bleeds out to other parts of yeah. their lives. And uh, when someone has, let's say, a, a well-being partner, which is something that I work and help people to do, Uh, If you ask the right questions, you will find out or if you spend some time with that individual, you're going to find out if there are other issues or if this this boredom, this bore out is affecting other parts of their lives. And that's where I always say that middle managers have to have their hand on the pulse of their employees. It's just a reality. Also, yawning and wearing earbuds, (laughs) you know, you walk in and they got. Uh, the old solitaire or something on the screen, you know, uh, those are all signs that something's yeah. up. Absolutely. That just reminded me. Yesterday, my son was playing baseball and here they're nine years old. It's a team of nine year olds, but it just drove me nuts that they're in the dugout. Their teammates are up hitting and they weren't paying attention. They were yawning or joking around while they were losing and uh, but I've seen that in the workplace at the same time. I'm like, it drove me nuts. I'm like, guys, pay attention. Your team's losing. Should you be joking around? But um, Kristen, there's a new TikTok trend. <laughs> yeah, that these kids do their they will do a, a full blown dance when they're safe on first base or they're up to oh bat. They dance before they get up to bat. like our whole culture has turned into a dance culture or something. Wow. Wow. Yeah. No, it just drove me nuts. I'm like, you know, and, and I saw that in the workplace as well. This, you're going to find this funny. I had an employee who, when he was helping customers, he would be sighing, kind of like he was like doing tra- teller transactions and he'd go, <sighs> like that. And I remember pulling him aside and I was like, do you realize they, realize you're huffing and puffing while you're helping customers and he's like i'm breathing kristen (laughs) i'm like i don't think that's breathing and if if that truly is you because people do try to regulate their breathing uh by taking deeper breaths i'm like if that truly is what you're doing here's the perception we talked about perception a few episodes ago it looks like you're irritated sounds like you're irritated so yeah the uh, same employees say show me the policy on breathing you know, i know but. right i'm surprised he didn't actually but i i still i still laugh about that one it's the same employee that once we weren't supposed to have drinks visible to customers on the teller line there was a little area off to the side where you're supposed to put them because i think it looks it looks cheesy when you're being helped by somebody and you can literally see their beverage that they're drinking out of it's just unprofessional And I had just reminded my staff, just put it off to the side. And I reminded him because he had it right up where customers could see. And instead of putting it off to the side, he threw it in the garbage can and it went all over the wall. And it was, a you know, just just had gotten Starbucks. So I think we had a little attitude problem. As soon as you told me what he was doing, I I started to say, what other problems did he exhibit? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that person is, is definitely suffering from bore out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's interesting when you when you start picking it apart, and you're like, Oh, here's some other issues working part time wasn't fully checked in, right? Yep, so yep. Uh, so there were a number of issues there. But yeah, <laughs> good stuff. All right. So a number another common sign of bore out is experiencing fatigue and feelings of worthlessness and irritability. And um, really, all of these things can be triggered by a combination of factors like feeling unstimulated on the job. And something I found interesting about that piece of research is, you know, I bet we all we all know someone from high school who dropped out despite they were wicked smart 
and a great student. They could take tests and pass them without studying. And I have a handful of friends from high school that dropped out and now they're they're very successful, own their own businesses. And when I talked to them about why they dropped out, they said they were bored to tears. And it just goes back to you have to keep people engaged and stimulated on the job. And Ron, as you mentioned, people learn differently. As a good leader, you need to be able to recognize that and know how to draw success out of them and, and create an environment where they can be successful. But uh, just goes to show you, we are all very different. Some excel in a school environment, sitting at a desk seven hours a day, and some don't. Kristen, that's very true. And we have some great teachers who listen to the podcast, and I appreciate them. So this is not directed toward great teachers. But, and I don't want to get political here, but a lot of times you have teachers who are also burned out. Yeah. And they're protected by the teachers union, so there's nothing can be done. So, you know, it's that vicious cycle that we've talked about. But I'm reading a book, uh, Verbal Judo, and the author's talking about, you know, he became a teacher with no experience, and he had troubled kids who started really getting in his face. And uh, he found out one of them was a mechanic, and he said, bring me a carburetor to school. And he had him teach how to align a carburetor. He started doing that every week, and he was able to reach – I think nearly 100% of the class. So I do think there has to be targeted effort. Now, I know there's some teachers have so many students, they just can't do it. They need an assistant. There's a lot of factors there. But in situations where you can, I think you can reach almost any kid. You just have to change the strategy. It's not a one size fits all. Right. Absolutely. There's a book, Carry On, Mr. Bowditch. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's about the revolutionary period. And it was it was a similar thing. This it was written. It's a bibli or a biography, excuse me. And my class just read it. But basically, it's it's that very point that you had. They had sailors that were unruly, loved to fight, got into trouble. It was when that they didn't have anything extra to do. There was a lot of downtime, and so Bowditch taught them all navigation. And the amount of fights and trouble they got into went to pretty much nil. And it just it just shows you can capture their minds, but you have to be creative on how you do it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So, Kristen, we pick on leadership a lot, but this is a leadership issue. Uh, not necessarily the leader has to be responsible for everything. I'm not saying that. But as I said, if you're observant, you can pick up on clues like you hear in that person, you know, expelling air. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you, I'm breathing wrong. <laughs> yeah, he's breathing. <laughs> if you look, you are going to see those signs. I mentioned earbuds. I had someone do that once, and I had to talk to them. Yeah. And there's things, there's very easy leadership techniques from putting them on a new project, something a little more exciting. If you can alternate the work, you know, I know some companies will literally have someone do something for a quarter, and then they switch roles. And you train the other person. I know that's not always possible, but that's one thing that you can do. You can pair people up on a project, and that hits that social aspect. Because a lot of times, if someone is really bored and then they start to go in their shell, uh, they're not around other people, that hurts. And then training new employees. We've said this before. It reignites that fire that day you got the call, that you got the job. So I absolutely believe that leaders can have a positive impact. And if you've got remote employees, you got to be creative on that. Yeah. And uh, you got to get on there, you know, facial, not just a phone call. You got to see them and, and you got to evaluate and have conversations and find out, you know, what they need from you. Right. And right. I think you can really help the, the uh, this bore out issue. Yeah, I do, too. And, you know, I did the the video calls when I was leading a team. And I, it was important, something I found, and I did get a little feedback on this, is they wanted to know in advance if they're, if it was gonna be a video call. So make sure to let them know, uh, you know, someone could be caught off guard with no makeup on, their hair up in a bun, and, and they would feel very uncomfortable and slightly irritated if they had no idea that we expected to see their face. So I agree. You need to have that accountability, but just set the expectation that you that you expect to see uh, Kristen, faces. Yeah. J- just to add uh, yeah. one other thing to this, you know, when we're talking about 
the role of the leader in I think sometimes in the podcast, it seems like we pick on leaders and, and you know, we're, it is a leadership podcast, but leaders have the ability um, to provide not, not just different work assignments, but they can get extracurricular things going. But here's the biggest mistake that I think leaders make. It's too many meetings. Yeah. I have to admit, I was never bored except during meetings. Right. And I actually, in my training programs, I challenge leaders to avoid using the word meeting unless it's necessary. It's okay to use it, but let's say it's just you and I, Kristen. I'm not going to say, Kristen, let's have a meeting. Yeah. I can say a planning session. I can yeah. say, hey, you got time to jump on a Zoom call? I need to right. discuss this. Because when I used to hear the word meeting, I would feel myself like getting, you know, break out in sweats. And, you know. Right. But it has a meetings, negative connotation. It does. And another thing that I train is if a, a leader is astute, we always do one hour meetings and no one ever visits that. We claim we, you know, we embrace change, but no one ever visits mm-hmm. that. But I read a study one time. If you set a meeting for 38 minutes, guess how long it lasts? 38 minutes. See, the problem is people are just going to keep rambling along because you know you've got a full hour yeah. because usually the conversations tighten up when you're getting toward the end. Right. So I challenge leaders all the time. I said, just send out an email that says we're going to have a 38-minute meeting and just watch the attention that it gets. <laughs> I, they're going to walk in automatically. They're going to be like, confused What's at up first. with this 38 minutes? <laughs> totally. Uh, but it can be a fun way to mix things up. But don't bore your employees senseless. And also it's okay to have some extracurricular things that you do so sometimes for fun yes and ron you're going to scranton here soon and it makes me think of the office michael had meetings michael had meetings like for nothing like anything the and conference everything. room yeah conference room now so and it, it, so he was wasting their time constantly obviously that's a comedy and he was intentional to be over the top but there are managers i've worked for him where they call these meetings and you've it's it's not a value add to anybody maybe but themselves i don't know if they're checking boxes or what but uh, definitely agree there. Let's if you're going to have one, make it a value add and have multiple people involved in the presentation. So it's not just one talking head. No, it's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing is priorities, Kristen. Uh, people have to reorganize those priorities sometimes, right. especially if you're dealing with bore out and find out what's important. Work on those tasks. Maybe get organized to take your breaks, take a walk. You know, talk with your manager, of course, to get these things approved. Right. But sometimes it's really just misplaced priorities. And there's another question I always ask in training, and I ask leaders this, do you go on vacation or do you go on vacation? Mm, right. And we've talked about that before, but there needs to be a team approach to vacation because if you're going on vacation and you're going to work while you're there, that's not a vacation. Right. And you can't unwind. You can't decompress. So... It is incumbent on both leaders, managers, and employees to try to coordinate where you can actually take a break. We're human beings. You can only carry so much, and you need right. you need to take those breaks. Yeah, absolutely. I want to continue on with the topic of communication because that's just, it's so critical to combating this bore-out syndrome. And I think it's really important that if, if you feel that this is something you're struggling with, that you're talking to your direct supervisor, make them aware of your situation and they can take a, a, another look at your tasks and the concerns that you have around them. We talked a few weeks ago, might even have been last week, about you can't necessarily, if you're doing the bare minimum, it's going to be pretty nervy to go to your boss and say that you need something taken off your plate. But what we're talking about is more or less along the lines of maybe that repetition is is getting to you. You need it. You need it changed up. And to your point earlier, Ron, we can we can rotate tasks every week. You were going to say something. Well, I'm going to delve over into life in general. Boredom, I think, Mm -hmm. destroys marriages. I think it can, like you said, it causes people to drop out of school. It's a very serious thing. Right. And. I, you know, as as I've gotten a little older and I talk to some people, I they just have plateaued in life and mm-hmm. they're bored. And I always yeah. try to say, you know, then you need change. You've got to do something different. 
right. tomorrow than you did today because obviously it's not working. Right. And when we get bored, we get stressed, we get tired, we go back to our old habits. It's really what's ingrained in us. Right. And I, I do think boredom, let's be honest, um, you know, you see people on their wedding day and it's amazing. You see them, you know, 10 years later and they're bored out of their mind. And I think mm. from relationships to, you know, your kids, everything, life is about mixing it up, you know, right. having some fun and, and going on trips and date nights and all these things. I don't want to get over into dating, but right. I'm just saying that I think boredom is a key factor in a lot of problems yeah. that we have in life. Oh, I absolutely agree. And I think one of the things that has always been good for our marriage is that we have our own things going on. I have my own interests that are completely separate from him. And he finds that attractive. I know some couples do literally everything together. That's not for us. We love that each other has their own identity and it's very attractive and exciting and you have something to talk about, right? So I, I completely agree. That is important in, in every respect of your life and uh, or aspect, excuse me. Um, something else. So I talk about talking to your, your direct supervisor about this. Make them aware. The angle is going to be, how do I break this up? Maybe you're like me and you want something in addition to your responsibilities. I get bored if I don't have enough responsibility. That sounds kind of sick in a sense, but I was always in top of being on top of being a manager. I was with doing DEI on this side and I was also helping with onboarding at, at the regional level. I had so many additional responsibilities and that really kept me engaged. And uh, some managers don't understand that, but you have to tell them, this, I am going to be better all around if you let me have this additional responsibility. Um, so just make sure you know that about yourself and you make it known. Kristen, it's really knowing the season of life. Um, so if you have someone who's maybe got, they've just had a child, twins, something like that, you may need to, you know, take away some responsibility and help them out for a few months. But you got someone who maybe doesn't have that and they they seem to be bored then maybe they need mm -hmm. some additional responsibilities something right. they might enjoy but it is really about seasons of life because there's different yes. seasons right now i'm in this great season because i don't have small kids and every time i turn around i remember one time i had an employee i think i said this before but he said i had a cold and i laid on the couch all weekend and i'm like what the heck did that feel like <laughs> i never got to do that uh yeah on the couch and recover from a cold Oh, my goodness. I know. That's Kristen, rare. I do have some solutions Yes. Uh, that I think will really help. And this Let's goes along with your communication. Number one is you survey staff and get an understanding, but also consider generational needs. Mm. We've talked about this in communication. Someone maybe in their 50s may not have the same need as someone in their 20s, and you got to be aware right. of that. Not mm. only I talk about communication, some people prefer text messaging, and if it's simple, do it. It's fine text them. I, my younger employees, I always texted them, which I like to text, but some people may want emails. It's understanding your employees with generational needs, but you right. got to ask the right questions. You have to say, do you find your work fulfilling? Mm. Uh, you've been on the company this long, and this is part of the onboarding. I always tell people, you know, you need to have regular routine check-ins, especially during the first year. And then you need to do it at least annually. And I'm not talking about a performance evaluation. I'm talking about making sure people feel valued right. they understand the work the vision of the company and those kind of things so uh, you want to survey and find out and be open to have conversation you want to make sure if you've got wellness programs that they're explained and announced I had some alarming statistics 60 percent of the people didn't even know they had a wellness program oh wow <laughs> so uh, I always encourage a well-being partner you pair people up but you strategically and specifically tell them I want you to actually ask about each other's well-being. Now, I heard you say well-being partner earlier, and I didn't know what you were talking about. Can you break that? You're starting to right now. Can you break that down yes, a little further? It, it, let me use a term. It's a wellness partner. I've started using well-being simply because I read a statistic that wellness has become another program, just like everything mm -hmm. else. We had that yeah. diversity burnout. We've uh -huh. talked about wellness. So people, they're busy, not, not the boredom, but some people are so busy, they don't want another. They don't care what you're offering. Right. So... I started looking at well-being because I'm responsible for my well-being, ultimately. 
And a well-being partner is someone, and, and you do, I call it P2P, you got to have permission to pry, but you actually check on each other. And it's not mm-hmm. surface level, it's another level right. lower, where I say, Kristen, you know, last week you've, you seemed, you know, you were yawning, you seemed tired, is there anything I can help you with? You don't have to go, what's going on with you, Kristen? You know, <laughs> you can do it yeah. in a way where you ease your way in, or you say, may I ask you uh, about how the kids are doing if you're concerned about it that's that permission to pry i see um be flexible based on personal need and again that's season of life you got to know we've already talked about vacation and there needs to be some focus on the benefits of well-being like some people have that driver personality i think you when you were talking about you needed something else you know to work on you're a driver i knew that you know when we talked when we met a year ago I knew right. that so when someone is driven you got to dangle the carrot you just have to do it it's just yeah. the way it is if someone's analytical you want to get charts and graphs and have them do some research for you right it's understanding personalities um, you do have to really pay attention to the hybrid work or virtual work I think that's more challenging and I think you did some yeah. things Chris and I did as well I would literally call and chat sometimes it wasn't even work related but I was really checking the well-being of those people. Now, this was during COVID, by the way, when all this started. I want to be very clear on that. Um, Lead by example, of course. They see you working out. They see you drinking water. They see you showing enthusiasm about the job and the company and the vision and mission. If you're bored, it's going to spread, you know. Absolutely. Uh, And then, uh, as I said, you've got to evaluate with specific questions it's not Mm -hmm. the performance evaluation it's how are you adjusting uh do you feel like you're part of the team it's those kind of questions what can i do like i teach the eight magic words are you getting what you need from me those things will help immensely and we need to get back to excitement I know we Maybe do. Maybe it's the word work. We need to change that. Remember, I said we need opportunity <laughs> clocks instead of just alarm clocks. Just completely reinvent. Yeah, reinvent it. Let's just We're come just up with a new word. Opportunity. Opportunity. No, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So the bank I worked for mo- most recently, they actually did wellness or well-being quite well. I was just thinking about something that they did. I didn't go because it was da- the downtown location, but they literally offered yoga with goats. Very Portland, right? I've heard but, of that. And, yeah, I mean, and so if I would have been closer and not have to have dealt with downtown traffic and parking, I would have gone. But it is it is things like that that even if a company's offering it and say only a small percentage take part, I saw that that was a goal and that was something that was available and that they were making a point to do this for associates. And so that goes far, just the intention Kristen, goes when, far. when I was in Spokane, uh, Washington, two weeks ago, I did chair yoga. I don't want to brag. Perfect. But, Northwest. But I, I perfect Northwest activity. Now, yoga and goats in Portland, is that like cow tipping in southwestern virginia probably from we love goats here have you Even heard of people cow tipping, in, Kristen? oh yeah i've heard oh, of okay. cow tipping okay. i did grow up in the country in washington state <laughs> it's very rural actually a lot of washington and oregon but yeah definitely cow tipping i didn't do it because that would have made me feel bad but uh you'd be amazed you can just drive around portland here and you'll see roosters and chickens and goats in these small urban yards <laughs> And so it's pretty interesting, but um, maybe you should bring some goats to your next Northwest training. I will tell you, when I hosted the National Wellness Conference, we timed it with an animal shelter, and I wasn't the biggest supporter of it. It sounded cool, but they were able to get black labs, just newborn puppies. So anyway, we had different rooms you could go into, right, with different things going on. I walk out in the hallway, the the line to see those puppies was all the way down the hallway. So I I thought, man, there's something to this. So long story short is I finally get a chance to go in. I sit on the floor. I'm in a full suit, tie and all. These puppies start jumping on me. Next thing you know, I'm laughing. And I was stressed because I was the host of a national wellness oh, conference, yeah. you know, yeah. me and a team. And it was very stressful. I started laughing. And I've got a picture on my Facebook. I need to pull it back up. But I'm literally in a suit holding a black lab. And I walked down the hallway and I said, I get it, people. I get it. I'm in the best right? mood. I'm in the best mood ever. And this is coming from the guy two episodes ago who struggled to say, when get a pet cat, for longevity. and Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. no, no. Recently, you had me read the the get a pet 
thing for <laughs> I think we we're talking about improving your your social situation um, and how much pets can reduce I'm your stress I'm levels. I'm open to it, Kristen. I'm still looking at goldfish. You'll get a black lab eventually. Goldfish. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Black well, lab. I don't know. Goldfish. Remember, I said goldfish and birds, or fish and birds are off. off. I know. Yeah. Need, All right, we're fur. rambling now. Yeah, you know what? Fun, Sometimes though. you got to do that. I don't know how many people stay until the end, anyways, right? So, <laughs> Kristen, <how's laughs> if, if you're here, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. How's our planner doing? It's doing well, seriously. Uh, I really wish that we had one already up and running for the fourth quarter of 2023 because I love it so much. But we've got a lot of sales coming in, so people are looking to get organized and have a very successful 2024. Well, Kristen knows I had a government office by book for all their managers i was uh, that's incredible i was Big so office. excited about that uh so and we got some really good uh ads coming if you're listening if you're with us to the end uh, we've got yeah. some really cool ads that are be on social media it tells you more about it if you can't see enough on amazon it will certainly tell you more about what the planner's about and uh, yes and chris and i talked about her having a driven personality as do i so you know i'm always going to take on another project so don't don't rest chris no we're going to do a Q4? I, yeah, why not? Q4 23? I think so. <laughs> oh, that's Why don't funny. you get that started? And so, no, I know, I'm right? Like yeah, you. I really over. did want, and I've still got the prototype right here, the blue one, before you nice. redesigned the cover and made it look a lot better. <laughs> and I really did. I wanted to get started in it. So uh, Right. It's Yeah. I have to tell you, so I, I talk about my mom a lot because she was an executive and she was very successful and, and her opinion means a lot to me. So she came over, she's been out of town for 10 days. She came over yesterday and I was like, check out the planner. And I was just waiting for her to say something. I don't know, maybe it didn't open far enough or something, right? I just had all these insecurities. She's like, this is great. I love it. And I was like, whoa, like that wow. means a ton coming from my mom. And she loved how you did the, how are you feeling today at the end, at the bottom of the pages, loved it. So that goes very far with me but that's like a genuine response from my mom is not afraid to give me her her true opinion yeah. and it was all positive my sister bought i think four and she gave them to uh, teachers assistants or other teachers as gifts and it is a great it's a it's a great gift i mean you can't go wrong awesome. with a planner i mean don't use it for like your wife's birthday but <laughs> it's uh, it really is a great gift honestly because I you're like telling someone, idea. I think you're saying, I believe in you. You know, I believe right, in you. Here's, right. Here's proof. So. Right. Exactly. All, All right. right. And it fits in a stocking. Just saying. <laughs> I'm a big stocking person. I was going to say, <laughs> what size are your stockings? I am the I stocking stuffer queen. Everything I buy, I try to buy it to where it will fit in the stocking. And so we have this thing on Christmas Eve. I fill the stockings and then my mom goes to put her stocking stuffers in. She's like, you've taken all the real estate. So that's uh, my it's my Give jam your kids for sure. A planner this year, <laughs> they will just love me for I'm that. sure. <gasps> All right, excellent, this excellent. Was fun. I love, yeah, absolutely. I think that you know I really feel like this will touch a lot of people, and I'm glad Justine brought this to my attention, and glad you were open to diving into yeah, it. Thanks, Justine. All right, you're awesome. Be the All leader right. you're meant to be. We'll see you next week. The Dirty Side of Leadership podcast is brought to you by Forward Operations. If you'd like to book Ron or Kristen for speaking events, training, or executive coaching, visit forwardoperations.com. Be the leader you're meant to be.